Many real estate agents across Australia confidently refer Property Insurance Plus to their clients as they recognise the price and benefit value of their policy combined with the client-focused service they deliver. They offer a comprehensive building and landlord insurance facility and have formed a powerhouse to present the very best in investment property insurance. Contact PIP today to find out more. All right, good morning, everyone. I'm Beck Holton. I am completely taking over and um, hijacking Ash's uh, podcast. So good morning, Ash, or good afternoon, Ash. Good morning, Beck. How are you? <laughs> this is so weird. It's I'm good. I'm good. I'm really excited. I've had so much good feedback just on socials around doing this uh, with you because you are always in uh, not the hot seat. You're always driving these podcasts. So I... Um, you know, I think you would be the first person if I was still podcast that I'd want on there. So I thought this is a really good opportunity to dig deep uh, and find out lots of questions. I've got lots of questions about business and I've also got some personal questions. So permission to be open with everything. 100%. Go for it. I'm, and I'm excited Beautiful. because I wasn't sure um, if there was going to be lots of questions because I I feel like I'm quite an open book and that everyone knows everything as well. So I'm yeah. so interested in what questions people have that they um, haven't come to me directly and yes. asked. So just for the listeners, I haven't given you any heads up on these questions. I've kept them well guarded and uh, I didn't even, up until five minutes ago, didn't even know if we had questions. So I think this is going to be super cool. So first of all, um, and I know you think that you are an open book and everyone knows everything about you, but we know everything about you currently. We don't know everything about you, you know, from where you started and why you got into real estate. So do you want to give us your five minute elevator story? Yeah, excellent. So I came out of school and I went and studied naturopathy and I had, I really love alternative medicine and I did about two and a half years. And then what happened was I got to the end where there was a lot of prac hours and I think I had about a hundred massage hours I had to do. And I had sort of finished my study, but I had that. And so I thought at that time, I'll go get myself a little job. And I got a job at a Century 21 office in Fremantle. And I would have been 17, 18. So I just did that just to supplement um, yeah, me studying. And then as you do when you're 18, you get a little taste for money. I think my first full-time job was probably about like 20000 a year or something like that. And I really enjoyed working. And what happened was for those that that knew, um, it was Tony Bonavita who owned Century 21 in um, in, uh, in Fremantle. He was quite well known in the area. And he, that was about 20, must have been about 24 years ago now. Anyway, he passed away and the people that purchased that business were a flight attendant and a pilot who had no idea of real estate. And I was reception and they honestly like were clueless. I have no idea why they even bought it. And so I ended up having to jump in to help them with the, the property management. I ended up having to do their pace because they didn't know how to use my at the time. I did strata. And I just basically was helping them. And because I'm a doer, I was happy to research and work it out. And that's what I did. And I ended up just working there for a number of years and uh, learned a lot from going into the deep end um, with their real estate business. They did subsequently sell. uh, But I moved over to a couple of other franchises and I had a pretty crappy boss at one stage. And when I had that crappy boss, I was like, I'm not working for ourselves again. And it just turned out that at that same time that I was a bit disgruntled in my role, my brother-in-law was also having a not great experience in um, where he was working. He was director for another company. And we just said, you know what, let's just go together. So the other reason driving force for doing that was because I was 22 when I started SoCo and I was always independent, didn't want to rely on my then husband to um, to work, um, for him to work. And I always wanted to bring money into the family. So I figured, okay, at 22, if I get into business now, I'll have five years before I'm ready to have children and then the business should be set up. So that's what we did and that works for me. But I always have said that 
I would have been a business owner regardless. I could have been a hairdresser at 22 and I would have opened a hairdressing salon. It just happened that I was in real estate and that's what I do. And while I love real estate, I actually love business more. Yeah, right. So you're quite entrepreneurial and we all know that now, um, given what um, what you've done with your PM Collective stuff. And we'll get into that in a minute. But did you ever do sales? No. And can I ask why? Because you are so driven. It's the stability, I think, the stability of the income uh, yeah. that that drove, drove me. Um, and while I love the pressure, I probably don't like the financial pressure. So yeah. that wouldn't have suited me. Yeah, and young kids and family, I guess, back at that at that point. So talk to me a little bit about... I've already learned two things I didn't know about you. A, you can give me a massage anytime and B, that you studied that. So I love that. But talk to me a little bit about, you know, your journey with SoCo. So you and Bill have a great relationship in your business and, um, you know, you're a sizable rent role now. Have you done acquisition? How has that grown? And at what point, like when you started, I'm assuming you were doing everything from reception to property, BDM, property management, until you got to scale. So can you talk to me maybe through some of those milestones on the in the business? Yep. So we started from scratch. We both got a small business loan out and we started paying ourselves from day one. I'm very sort of big on that. I think it's very important for startups. Um, then by about six months, we were starting to get some good traction. He did sales, I did property management, and we just sort of ran our own race. So for those that don't know, Bill's my brother-in-law, so he's married to my older sister. He's 12 years older than me. Um, so I have known him since I was six years old. And when he met my sister, she was sort of 18 at the time. So that's, um, you know, close to pretty much a brother-like figure. And he... Um, and so, yeah, so we went into business. So that was always a very, very safe family option without it being too close, like without it being your brother or your sister or your mum or your dad. So that was good. We built up to about 200 properties. And then when we got to 200, we were at that stuck figure. So we did a, do one acquisition. So um, we acquired a portfolio from Nigel Satterley just for the South Perth. And there was a lot of opportunity in that business, a lot of waste of money. And so uh, that was quite good. I don't know whether I would do another acquisition. We've talked about it, but I don't see the value personally for us. I um, love, um, you know, I'm glad we've done one, but I don't think I need to do it again. Um, so we just pretty much built our staff. Um, we have a very family-like environment and that's really, I guess, where we keep um, a lot of staff and we're very much family first before employees um, mentality. And we now have a 1,000 properties. Our property management's definitely a lot stronger than our sales department, but it's still a very active sales department. And we are probably, I guess I would say, at the end of our, you know, the business journey. So as we get older, we've been in the business now, we've had the business for 18 years. Um, it's growing really, really well. And I, I feel like, um, you know, we're at that final rat race, you know, of another 10 years or 15 years. And then, um, and then we will sort of, yeah, I guess to sort of, you know, wind up totally. or make, or make yeah. another business decision then. Um, but I will definitely do more businesses. Um, but, yeah, it, it, I found Soko has been a very easy business to run, very easy yeah. for staff. I'm not that type of person that's had any pain points in business. It's been very good. And I think it's also because Ooh. Bill and I are so different. We, um, we are chalk and cheese and that's, probably while it's a frustrating thing it's actually a, a good thing as well yeah well it probably gives you really natural like hard lines on where your skill set is and where his skill set is and I think you know that certainly definitely works for Frank and I as well we just know each other's strengths and weaknesses and we try not to cross um and confuse the team so on that so Tell me, so the, I mean, that's an amazing story in itself for organic growth to a thousand. So well done, congrats! And we know you're a great BDM, and that's on my list too. There's lots of questions around that. So when did you decide to start PM Collective? How did that come about? So that was about three or four years ago, and it came about because I had quite a few business owners, about three, who just ironically all within the same couple of weeks, and it was January, and it was the start of the year, and they messaged me and said, Ash. 
can I just catch up? I just want to go through a few ideas I've got with business. And I, it was just random, like two or three people. So I said, that's cool. But would you mind if we just did it in one catch up? I've got a couple of other people that also want to have similar conversations. So um, they were like, yep, that's fine. So we caught up for a coffee and just had a general chin wag. And then those people said, this was so helpful. Can we do it again next month? And then they brought some more people. And then after that, they, we realised there were some property managers and um, that weren't able to leave their like leave for a coffee during the day because maybe their bosses didn't allow you know um, yeah right yeah it's a lot of personal appointments but it's not it's a work appointment and they didn't allow it so I was like you know what we should record these conversations because everyone needs to hear these conversations we're having let's do a podcast and so then I just started recording it on a podcast googled how to do it. And then create those conversations each week so people can just listen to them in their own time. So that's sort of how the podcast started and the coffee and conversations. And then over time, like I've now been approached by people in Strata saying, Ash, Strata needs this. Can we do some Strata catch-ups? And so just introducing a few other things. The um, the catch-ups are so good because they're more of an intimate environment, whether there's one person that shows up or 15 people that show up you can definitely have those safer conversations that you can't have online. And when I started about three years ago, or maybe it was four years ago, um, the um, property manager Facebook groups were quite strong and there was a lot of negativity coming out of them. I think they're better now, but back then there was a lot of negativity. And it was because people didn't know each other and they didn't know um, where they were coming from, where they commented or gave advice. And it was just so precious. And I remember thinking, I need to get these people together because that person that made a comment that is, you know, um, that everyone's getting upset about is actually a really good human being who's really giving some good advice but just not articulating it maybe the right way so it was very much trying to create you know let's just catch up in person a bit more guys and and really um support each other that way then online where it I just didn't feel like it was working well for the industry when I saw those comments yeah yeah it was it was pretty awful back then um and that, you know, I think that comes from the, and I know your whole approach is collaboration, not competition. And, and you know, while we think salespeople have big egos, I think in the property management space, people like to think that they have all the knowledge, you know, and it, it, it does sort of come through as a bit ego driven as well. So PM Collective, and then you've got property profiling as well, and SoCo. So three really big, and I'm sure you've probably got more, but they're three really big um projects I guess is the best way to put it what tell me about your so you're a full-time BDM you're a business owner and you've got property profiling MPM collective and you have three of your own children six in your collective household and you are really involved with your kids talk to me around um, and a couple, I'm just sort of summarising a couple of questions. What's your biggest work mum entrepreneur hack? Well, it's very interesting that we're having this conversation today because <laughs> the, the hack is really don't sweat the small stuff. Like today, it's 43 degrees. I double booked myself a couple of times. Um, I had to reach out to a couple of people to help me. And I... Um, really just couldn't be us driving children to school and driving back. Now, this is probably really bad advice, but <laughs> I just needed a day of just chilling out. I just don't want to be in a car today. And I actually just really, you know, I really need to focus on a couple of things. And I was feeling, I am, I was feeling a bit stressed. I am feeling a bit stressed about a couple of things. So for me, I've just gone, you know what, kids, today, do you guys, you know, want to stay at home? They're like, hell Yes. And we're at home today and I'm doing all my appointments from here and just chilling out a little bit and giving permission to do that, which is very, very hard for me. And I don't do it very often if maybe this might even be the first time, like really rare, but I'm just trying to get a little bit better at that. And I think as well, we can focus on so many things that are really, really not that important. Like, you know what, if my kids have to order canteens three times a week, it doesn't actually really matter. Or if last night I wasn't home till six o'clock, 
it's okay for everyone to have hot dogs for dinner. Like it's not What's a hot dog. Uh, no, a hot dog. Sorry, I just said it wrong. A hot dog. <laughs> hot dog. <laughs> Please tell me you know what a hot dog is. I do know what a hot dog is. Not a hot dog. I was like, sorry, no, I said, I said, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it's just like trying not to stress myself out with that. Like it doesn't actually really matter if we have a crap food week one week um, because I actually really like baking and cooking. So I do yeah. do a lot of cooking and stuff on the weekend and try and be prepared as I can. So that would probably be one of my hacks um, would be um, being convenient with um, with food. It's, it's pro- to be honest, that's probably the biggest thing, isn't it? Like food and shopping yeah. and dinner is a real time consuming exercise for anybody oh and a mental load that you don't need yeah um and and I think you know one of the things that you often say to me is um and I you know I appreciate all the advice you've given me with kids and balance and things but I always whenever I talk to you I find you always calm and I don't know if you're just like a duck on water and it's, you know, but it, it always comes across. And I think that's that's an amazing thing. You probably, you always- you probably should ask my children that because I think the question would be, the answer would be a little bit different. And I um I did have a sore throat the other day from screaming so much in the morning. <laughs> I get frustrated. So I come across as calm, but, um, but yeah, you're yeah. totally back under water. Yeah, but I think, I think what you said there is key, right? Don't. Like no one's gonna die if you have hot dogs for dinner. No, no. <laughs> and in fact, your kids would probably love you even more because you had hot dogs for dinner. So it's just where's that pendulum swinging and what feels right at the time. So and, and actually, oh, sorry. So now that you said the pendulum, I think I heard as well that someone said to me once, "It's never a balance; it's always a tilt." Sometimes yeah. you tilt in favour of work and the kids are just going to have to wait or sometimes you favour, you know, to the kids and the family and work's got to wait. And if you just learn that it's not a balance and there's always going to be one side that has to um, that has to yeah. drop a little bit, that's totally fine. No, and I think what's coming across and it always has with you is it's let go of perfection and just do it, you know, like that I a lot of working mums and especially well, working parents that I know are trying to be the perfect parent, the perfect salesperson or the perfect property manager and the perfect this and the perfect to everyone and, and that's never going to ever come out well for anyone. Um, so let, I just want to talk about BDM for a little bit because there were quite a few questions. So one of the questions, and I think this is a good question for everybody, in your BDM circle, what would you do differently now if you were starting out but you knew what you know? Oh, that's so easy. I only got my BDM at SoCo um, about 13, 14 months ago and I should have hired her, uh, hired a BDM a lot sooner and yeah. I definitely regret not bringing a BDM in my business and not seeing a BDM as an investment um, as, as opposed to another wage or another cost. That definitely yeah. was a big mistake and um, I love doing BDM and that's what we kept on saying. Well, why would we? Why would we get someone in when you like doing it and you're good at it? And I found myself. Um, I was going very, very well, but I was not doing a very good service to my property managers when I put paperwork on their desk and had no idea of anything else and told them to work it out. I was really being. A, I was a big problem in our business by doing that. So having a BDM, um, I wish I had done that a lot sooner. And I still now do all our lead generation um, and I pass it all on to Sam and she handles it all because she handles it a lot um, a, a lot more process-driven than what I would. Yeah, and she probably doesn't have as many balls in the air as well so she can, you know, focus on on that. Um, and, again, we're talking about BDM, where, um, where, what is your biggest source of leads so LinkedIn and video in general. So um, like YouTube, I get a lot of traction from YouTube content and LinkedIn. And it really comes down to the fact that those two platforms, they're not saturated with property management activity. 
I always say I'm not doing anything special that no one else is doing. All I'm doing is putting it on those two platforms um, while everyone else is still doing Instagram and Facebook, which I still do, but everyone's doing that. And to give you an example, I was trying to um, sort out my, my panel for an event coming up and I was on LinkedIn and I was like, I need to find out who the the um, the big players are on LinkedIn in Perth so that I can invite them to be a panel guest. And when I went through my LinkedIn feed, I could not find anyone in Perth um, on my as I was scrolling. And I put a big wow. link on LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, and I, I found the first person that came up, I sent him a message and said, can you please be on my panel? And he said, listen, I, I don't think I'm fantastic at it. I said, you know what? I'm seeing you. That's the main thing. I'm seeing you on it. Is this um, in the real estate space or just in general in the in real estate um, in the, um, well, actually probably would have been in the property management space yeah. straight wide, but I was specifically looking for WA yeah. as well. So it's just a space where no one's saturating the market. So it's very easy to stand out, even though you're not doing anything any more than anyone else. Yeah. yeah, gotcha. So just a little plug for your power moves, which I know is coming up and I know you plug it everywhere, but um, I've done some LinkedIn training uh, as well. And I've done Carmen's on you know, confident on camera. So to put all that together in a day, people need to get onto that. Um, can't, I can't stress, I'm coming and I can't wait, but I can't stress that enough for all the other um, property managers and BDMs out there, even salespeople. I mean, that's open for everyone, isn't it, really? It's not even real estate-based. It's, it's yeah. very generic yeah. for anybody. Yeah. So an agents, finance brokers, sales reps, business owners, BDMs, the whole lot. Like, I think that what I love about LinkedIn and video is that it costs you nothing to do. Like I hate spending money on marketing. And if you can just learn how to do a better video or how to use LinkedIn better, like you, you, you like the skills that I learned from Carmen three years ago would hands down probably have been the best skills that have helped my business um, grow because of that confidence. And I said to Carmen the other day, if anything, I've actually probably gone a little bit too far because I noticed in some of my videos that I've been doing, uh, specifically on TikTok, um, I am looking really crap like I've just rolled out of bed and my <laughs> feet everywhere. And I just said to Carmen, I said, I'm taking confidence to a new level. And yet no one's saying anything about my appearance, no. but you should be because I look like shit. And um, I'm trying to pick up the game a little bit, but that's how comfortable I'm becoming. And I probably yeah. need to perfect it up a little. Oh, uh, but you know what? That's, and, and, and again, please don't take this the wrong way, but when you're never one to glam up to go to, you know, like obviously if I see you down the street, it's how I see you. So I, I don't think I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I look at your TikTok videos and your Instagram videos sometimes and go, oh, just, just got to do it. Like it's quite motivating. Just do it. Just put the camera in front of you and do it. And I think we just all find excuses. Like my hair's not done. My makeup's not done. The lighting's not right. I don't have enough battery. Left. There was like a million excuses and I'm, I'm really big on that. Um, I do. So one of the questions that came through um, on Instagram actually was what is next for you? So not your business, but for you yourself, like personally, what you know, if you were to look at your, five years away, where do you where do you see yourself, and what space will you be in? That question, um, I would say to you that I would be um, definitely putting more attention. I've been trying not to make this work related, but probably putting yeah. more attention into um, other businesses and other business ideas that I've got. Um. I probably would love to travel a little bit more with my kids um, and um, that type of thing. But, I mean, I really, like, I love what I do every day. I'd be happy doing exactly what I'm doing now for the next 10, 20 years. So I feel like I don't necessarily need any goals because I'm sort of, like, I don't need a holiday because I only do what I want to do every day of my life anyway. So I don't need to have a break from my life because yeah. I love my life. So it's. Like my kids definitely, um, I, I think as they get older, I am looking forward to being in a position where I can potentially, you know, retire in 10 years and then give them the support that they need to start their own businesses. So in 10 years' time, they'll be like 18, 20 and 22. So I would love to be, uh, yeah, in that position to be retired and have the time to do charity work, which I like to do, but also help them set, 
set them up in their businesses and be a support there. That's probably where I'd be quite happy to be. Yeah, cool. Living up in Gilderton, obviously. <laughs> yeah, now I've got a roof up. And, well, the plan is to, to retire up there and, yeah. and that's that's a great place because it's only sort of, you know, so close, so yeah. close to Perth anyway. So I can um, yeah. Yeah, live my life up there very easily. I love it. And um, I think I'll finish on this one. I'm not even sure how long we've been talking for, how much time. It, does it matter? I don't think it matters. It's your podcast, so whatever you want to do. But um, so, and I've tried to sort of surmise, because there was about 20 questions that come through, just so you know, people are very interested in, and I, and I, whenever I put up a poll or questions, I never get any responses. So I, was, I felt like a rock star that people were actually responding to my my little questions and polls so I tried to surmise them and put them in groups so we just went going backwards and forwards but um so I've got I've I've got two it's probably two parts to this question so a couple of people have come through um and and the way and I could have this wrong but the way I was interpreting what they wanted to know is how do you know and this is around your entrepreneurial skills how do you know when an idea is worth investing and pursuing stay with us we'll be right back today's wonderful sponsor is property assist wa shannon and her team are really committed to assisting property managers workload by assisting them with outsourcing services like routine inspections final bond inspections and property condition reports Keep your property managers doing what they love and outsource the things they don't to a company that thrives on positive feedback and guarantees a premium personalised service with a smile. The vision of Property Assist WA is to make a difference to the quality and perception of property managers, enabling you to keep your clients happy whilst improving the efficiency of your staff. Oh, you never know. You just do it. You you literally just do it and see what happens. But I think if you're doing it for the right reasons, then it will always work out. So PM Collective, that is because a support network was needed in the property management space. Nothing else mattered than that. And I could have given up a lot when it comes to like the catch-ups and, you know, there was times where only one time, but where no one turned up and I was there by myself having a coffee and I looked at the positive and thought, you know what, Ash, you never get time just to sit and have a coffee by yourself. This is actually quite nice. Yeah. Uh, and then as time goes on, it builds up and now we get good numbers. But you never know. But you you have to give it a go. And you can't give up after the first negative experience. You've got to keep on doing it because the bigger picture is that it's needed in the industry. And with property profiling, same thing there. I was not doing it for money. I was not doing it for anything more that these investors I felt were getting mucked around by um, that were buying interstate. I felt that they were getting mucked around by sales agents and I didn't want them. um, I didn't want that happening. I wanted them to buy with a bit more confidence. It was never about the money. It was about them being looked after. Even if I had to do it for free, I was happy doing it for free and I did do it for free for a while. Um, So it's, I, the the reason for doing these businesses has never, ever been money. Even SoCo, it never started because I wanted to have a business or have money. I did it because, well, I did it because I wanted to have an income, but it was never about anything more. So I think that you, if you're starting a business for the right reason, then it will always work out. But, um, and there's never any um, goals associated with them. It is just doing the right thing and um, and continue to do it even if it's not going as fast as what you want it to because I can look at the big picture and know that it's if it's only helping one person then it's still a benefit of doing that and I'm okay it only helping one person and not a hundred. Yeah. So that's really where my headspace is at. And it's obviously work, working and works for you. And I think it's the whole let go of the outcome and reap the income, right? Like just do things that feel right, and um, which uh, it transitions really well into that second part of that question. Um, and it was from someone who's working under another in another office, and they want to start their own. And the question it was it was confidentially written to me, but the question was, what would be the first step for this person that you would say? you know, make sure you've got this before you do that type of thing. I would 
continue staying in my workplace, having an income while I was studying my license, for example, if I was wanting to open a real estate and I would be doing my study in the evenings, I would be doing it quietly. I would be getting um, my triennial and, and all of the qualifications that I needed. And I would 100% say either have some six months of savings for what you need to live or go get a business loan for six months of expenses that include your wage. I'm really, really passionate about that because I see a lot of businesses where they don't take a wage from day one. And I just don't think that's the right way to have a business. I think you need to pay yourself if you are working. So um, trust that that process. Um, and I have only ever heard good stories. So um, study and yeah, qualifications while you're still employed, um, have the, the uh, six months of savings or six month business loan, and then go into it. And my other advice would be that I see more success in business owners that go into it 100% like full time. And that's why they need to get a wage. Because there was a comment on one of the communities recently where someone said, oh, should I go get a part time job while I'm starting my business? And if you are only going to work part time in your business, you're only going to get half the result. So if you want the results quickly, you need to go in and just trust yourself. And at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out, then you've got a little loan to pay back and you go get another job. There's plenty of jobs around. Like if you always think of what the worst case scenario is, which is really not that bad, then yeah. it's then at least you understand what you have to go back on. It's never a daunting process. So for me, that's what I thought when I started. And I think at the time my loan was 30000 And I thought to myself, well, there are other 22-year-olds out there getting car loans for $30,000. i am in my, you know, in my little car for $1,000. So worst case scenario, it doesn't work out. I'll just go get a job and pay that money back. Yeah. So, I think people are getting loans for a lot less, like new boobs and, you know, like silly stuff. So you're right. And um, before we finish up, I... Um, in the next, let's. Well, is there any? Obviously, your events. Is there any events that you recommend people go to this year that you've seen that you think, oh, that's a really good event? You know, because there are so many. There's a lot of noise in that space, and I even I was looking at the calendar, going, well, I could probably go interstate for two and do maybe four local ones this year. And there was just so many to choose from. What would you recommend people do this year? Yeah, definitely a saturated space at the moment. But I personally love the events that are either non, not directly real estate related. So I would say um, that like Life PM have got a great mental health first aid course coming up. I think that that is a must have for property managers because we need it for our tenants, our, our colleagues, and also our tenants um, and owners. So mental health first aid with Life PM, highly would recommend that. I do highly recommend video coaching. And so something a little bit non, um, non real estate, but so important and that um, yeah. confidence I would highly recommend. And then I would say, I mean, to be honest, out of all the events, I think people get great value just out of those coffee and conversation catch-ups. They're free. Yeah. Cost you a coffee. It's intimate enough to have those, um, you know, to have those pr more pr semi-private conversations. They're all around Australia. And so if you are a property manager that maybe has a, doesn't have a business owner that like allow, like pays for things, um, there are those options which you're going to get some really good value out of and um, some good tips, some good apps and things like that. So I would recommend those. They would probably be my main ones that I would suggest. But if you, but you know, for the price conscious person, um, the, there's lots of podcasts out as well, and then the um, and then the coffee and conversations. But there is a lot of noise in that event space. We don't. Um, I've got one coming up that I'm excited about, and I don't know if you've seen it, but it was um, Josh Cobb's AI. Have you seen? Oh, yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Well, that came through. Yeah, he always does good stuff, Josh. He does really good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I booked into that one because it's um yeah it, it's knowledge that we need to have in all aspects of our life as well as our um our work. So that AI yeah. automation is really just upskilling uh, upskilling us. 
Yeah, for sure. And you might be able to put the link in the show notes for that one for the, everyone. Um, that's probably all I've got time for today. But, you know, I it just goes to show with the response I had that people, you know, you, you are such a, um, you know, a, a figure in our, especially over here in Perth, but I know even nationally, you know, people know who you are and, and it's not because of, it's not because of what you do, it's because of who who you are, it's because why you do it that I think has resonated with so many people. So thanks for letting me gate crash your podcast. I, I just, I feel like you needed your space on it and I'm so glad we got to do today. So thanks for your time and um, yeah, I can't wait to see I hope everyone gets a lot out of that conversation because there was some really cool things that I wrote down as well. It was a fabulous idea and, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. So thank you for um, arranging it for me. No problem. Inspect Real Estate, or IRE, is an Australian-based software company that is passionate about creating quality, customised solutions for agents, tenants, buyers and property owners designed by agents for agents because we care. IRE has now processed more than 108 million inquiries and is currently being used by thousands of industry leaders. There are many time-saving products from booking and managing inspections within our flagship product ROL, creating and managing applications with ToApply and AppChecker, and tracking keys with Keyware, through to listing on Inspect Real Estate's free property portal, Tenant App plus so much more. Visit inspectrealestate.com.au or give us a call on 1300 934 721.